Did somebody say mommy issues? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 mama's boys in movies. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at big screen males who stayed a little too close to their mothers right into their adult lives. We're basing our choices on how controllable, protective, and childish they act around their mamas and how memorable they are. Number 10, Owen Lift, Throw Mama from the Train. Owen! Owen! What? You can only push someone so far before he or she decides to push back. After living under his mother's thumb for most of his life, not to mention living under her roof, Owen is finally trying to get his life together as a writer. Right into her, right? Yeah, Owen. Don't start that again, Mama, and don't hit me anymore. However, this is a move that doesn't go over well with Mama. Despite her nagging, condescending, and generally just mean treatment of Owen, he still waits on her hand and foot, and not without a homicidal level of resentment bubbling underneath his helpful demeanor. Well, just meet her. Maybe she'd be somebody you'd like to kill. After some killer hallucinations and several failed murder attempts, Owen still won't stand up for himself and finally decides to enlist the help of his writing teacher to kill her instead. But remember, this is a black comedy. He's trying to kill me. I asked for the salted nuts. He brought me the unsalted nuts. Number 9. Cyrus. Cyrus. Come here. Hmm. A mama's boy isn't always a good thing for the mother. When beaten down, John meets Molly, the two hit it off like magic. That is until Molly's 21-year-old son Cyrus decides to step in. So, uh, are you gonna stay the night? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should ask your mom, I don't know. Like... Cyrus privately threatens and publicly embarrasses John, as well as lies to both John and his own mother. Yeah, just climb up the tree like a jaguar. <laughs> oh, that's great, that's great. You're a natural. Cyrus does whatever he can to sabotage their relationship, even interrupting their attempts at sexual intercourse on several occasions so that he can keep his mom to himself. With a sociopathic level of deception, Cyrus pushes them to the brink multiple times, even fighting John at a wedding and pinning the whole fight on the older man. Ultimately, when Cyrus goes too far and it comes time for him to grow up, it's his love for his mother that makes him change his tune. That's the right. No problem. Number 8. Alexander Sebastian, Notorious. Mother. Mother. Just because you're a Nazi agent doesn't mean you don't have a soft spot for your mother. Alex Sebastian thinks he's found the love of his life when he marries the dazzling Alicia. But his mother is already against it. I am married to an American agent. When Alex discovers Alicia is actually an undercover agent trying to expose him as a Nazi, he doesn't confront her and handle the situation himself. Instead, he runs right to his mother's arms. Acting like a schoolboy and letting his mother take control, he lets her hatch a plot to poison Alicia, which Alex is all too happy to help with. Excuse me, I, I won't go to bed, I think. Playing again, darling? Sorry to play again. Oblivious to his mother's selfishness and menacing control, Alex follows her lead joyfully in an attempt to kill the only other woman he's ever loved. I'm Alex's mother. I knew when I saw you. Number 7. Raymond Shaw, the Manchurian Candidate It's a terrible thing to hate your mother. But I didn't always hate her. When I was a child, I, I only kind of disliked her. There are controlling mothers, and then there are brainwashing mothers. Raymond Shaw comes home a hero from the Korean War but was unknowingly brainwashed when he was held as a prisoner of war. I must ask you to forgive their somewhat lackadaisical manners, but I have conditioned them or brainwashed them. Back at home, Raymond's mother is driving her husband's communist charge run for the presidency and uses Raymond for her dirty work. I want the nominee to be dead about two minutes after he begins his acceptance speech. Raymond is like putty in her hands as she argues him into submission time and time again even making him grab his head like a child throwing a tantrum. He folds so easily to his mother that even though she can activate his brainwashing to completely control him at any time, she only uses this trick when all else fails. What is it, mother? I thought of a greeting as that at 3.30 in the morning. Number 6. Tommy DeVito, Goodfellas. Come on, come on. Oh, hey. Yeah, look who's here. Look who's here. Hey, 
some others can control even the most psychotic mobsters. And the best kill them with kindness. Tommy DeVito is the most violent and unpredictable member of his whole gang, constantly keeping everyone on edge. But Tommy turns into a puppy around his oblivious mama, who treats him like an innocent child even when he arrives covered in blood. He's powerless to her relentless hospitality, complimenting her art and even teaming up with her when she criticizes the rest of his squad. Henry, what's the matter? You don't talk too much. You should talk a little bit. A little quiet for me. When he sugarcoats his promiscuous love life, his sarcastic reason to not settle down rings so bluntly it would make Oedipus blush. That's what I, I mean. settle down almost every night, but then in the morning I'm free. I love you. I want to be with you. I want to be with you. Why? Don't just settle down. <laughs> Number five, cousin Angelo and Nick Portacollis. My big fat Greek wedding. Nick, did you check the meat before you signed for it? Yeah, I checked it. It better be fresh. When your family is as big as the Portacollises, you're bound to have a few men children in the bunch. Nick still acts like a kid around his parents and gets slapped around by his mother whenever he steps out of line. Which happens often, given his endless pranks on his sister's fiance. Angelo, on the other hand, is so dependent on his mother's support that every time he criticizes anyone, he includes his mom in the conversation and talks through her. Ma, tell her I open up the dry cleaners every day and I think it's about time she did something for a change. Excuse me? Just in case his immaturity wasn't bad enough, Angelo still calls for his mother when any of his siblings hit him, despite his age. Uh -huh. oh, Angelo. Number 4. Robert Bobby Boucher Jr., The Water Boy. I don't ever want you associating with little girls. Why not, Mama? Because little girls are the devil! Bobby Boucher is more obedient to his mother than most pets are. But most people treat their pets better than this mama treats Bobby. Despite berating him, teaching Bobby a selfishly charged sense of right and wrong, and insulting his intelligence to his face, Bobby obeys his mom and rarely puts up a fight, even letting her brush his hair. Mama, maybe you could stop brushing my hair so I can read. When Bobby realizes he's unhappy and tries to better himself through school, football, and love, his mom gives him hell, causing him to nearly give up on everything. That is until some powerful advice from his coach gets Bobby on the right track. But what mama don't know won't hurt her. Number 3, Jason Voorhees, Friday the 13th franchise. Let her get away, mommy. Don't let her live. I won't, Jason. I won't. A mama's boy can have a mother worth killing for. Jason Voorhees' mother was extremely protective of him and even went so far as to kill to avenge his supposed death. So Jason had to find a way to return the favor. Look what you did to him. Look what you did to him! After his mother is killed, Jason goes on a franchise-long killing spree to avenge his mother's death and pay back her love. That's a good boy. Now come to mommy. Mom. His mother's control over him is so powerful that it ends up being his major weakness, however, as shown when his prey uses it against him in part two. The murderous way that Jason shows his love for his mother and coaxes his mother to avenge him is what makes Jason such a haunting and unforgettable mama's boy. Oh, my sweet, innocent Jason. My only child. Number two, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. It looked easy, but... Oh, what happened? First Mama, thing... what's vacation mean? If you can't stand up for yourself, you learn to appreciate someone who will. Forrest Gump was never the sharpest tool in the box, but he always gave his all to impress his mama. What's my destiny, Mom? You're gonna have to figure that out for yourself. Mrs. Gump fought so hard to make sure Forrest was always getting the best in life that he couldn't help but become dependent on her. Forrest quotes her sayings like proverbs and gets her to explain words to him even as an adult. With Mrs. Gump fighting many of his childhood battles, even when it meant suffering for her, Forrest was always in awe of his devoted mother. I didn't know it, but I was destined to be your mama. It's his unwavering belief in his mother's words that motivates Forrest to succeed, making him a mama's boy even if he doesn't realize it. My boy Forrest is going to get the same opportunities as everyone else. He's not going to some special school to learn how to retread ties. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. 
As always, whatever you choose to be, you will have a proud mother. Have a nice day. Are you forgetting something? What? It comes in a brown paper sack and rhymes with my lunch? Hello, mother. Don't you hello, mother me. What are all those people doing out there? Number one, Norman Bates, Psycho. I'm not even gonna swat that fly. I hope they are watching. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know and they'll say. Talk about getting into your head. Norman Bates is the seemingly normal proprietor of the Bates Motel, with a slightly abnormal relationship to his best friend, or in this case, his mother. Do you go out with friends? Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. Bates is constantly overheard arguing loudly with his mother, but also quickly jumps to her defense the moment someone criticizes her. Mrs. Bates has her claws in so deep that even his fantasies of standing up to her sound pathetic and half-hearted. Just talking about her sends him off the deep end, even though he himself says that he's actually the one with all the power. No, I tell you, no. I won't have you bringing strange young girls in for supper. But what makes Norman's case so peculiar is how exactly Mrs. Bates is able to control him so. You know, considering her fate. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.